Last year, I took a trip on Israel's flag carrier Al Al from Dubai to Tel Aviv and I was literally blown away by their hospitality and service. I had the nicest seat, fantastic cabin crew and plenty of food. However, the whole story had a massive plot twist. The airline figured out that I was coming and gave me the same chewy treatment. Short, I was fooled into an experience most of you may not have. And while I appreciate the airline doing their homework and I'm very grateful that they treated me like a good guest, it's most likely not what you are going to experience if you were to fly Al Al. So I figured out I owe you guys a proper review. So I booked myself on a flight from Tel Aviv to London in economy class this time to show you the sobering reality of the Israeli flag carrier, to show you what it's really like. My trip started the day before in India's lovely capital Delhi. I wanted to give Air India a go since they've been taken over again by the Tata Group, so I hopped on a short 6 hour flight on Air 787 Dreamliner bound for Tel Aviv. Once I arrived in Israel and a short night at a nearby airport hotel, I made my way back to the airport for an early departure on El Al's flagship, the 787-9. So let's do this and let's check in for our flight to London Heathrow. So, all checked in for the El Al economy class experience all the way to London. Al Al's main hub is the Ben Gurion International Airport, named after Israel's first Prime Minister. The airport handles around 20 million passengers annually and today I was one of them. Once you claim immigration, you go on a 180 meter walk of the Grand Boulevard, with photos being displaced of the diverse culture of Israel. Also recently, a big 44 meter long mural was installed showing 4000 years of Jewish tradition and history in the region. It's always a nice sight and shows the unique architecture of this airport. So guys, just enjoying my morning coffee because it's yeah, literally just 7 a.m. And opposite me is a 737 of Royal Air Morocco. And I think I said that in my previous video, it's nice when countries come together and build bridges, such as Morocco and Israel or the UAE or Bahrain, all establishing uh, diplomatic relations and uh, benefits especially the aviation market. So many flights have been established, especially between Dubai and Tel Aviv. Massive market, no? Very interesting to see. Great to see as well. So I'm literally sitting opposite the 787 Dreamliner, which is my plane today on the flight to London, which is a quite rare occasion because usually it's a 737 uh, 900 or 800s that Al Al sends to mainland Europe uh, mostly. But I can't also give you a good close up filming with my camera because they have those weird stickers like on the window. So with those tiny little dots. So if you stand still, you can't see things, but when you move your head or you move the camera, then you get to see things. I don't know whether they do that uh, to prevent the heat coming in or whether they, want they don't want people to take photos because obviously security and safety is quite of an issue uh, here in Tel Aviv. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> During boarding, the crew was rude and snappy with passengers ahead of me that I put my camera away so I wouldn't get punched in the face. But once I was past them, I was able to get a nice glimpse of the premium economy and main cabin, featuring 222 seats and a 9 abreast configuration. Each seat comes with a personal entertainment screen, a foldable table, as well as a USB slot. The screen in front of you features plenty of entertainment options, and so far, the hard product on it all is rather impressive. Also, the 787 Dreamliner is offering internet connectivity, for a decent price I would say. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi wasn't working on this flight and it was a problem that occurred on my previous Al Al flight as well, so you shouldn't really rely on it. One thing I constantly noticed during the boarding process was how little patience the crew had with its passengers and that was rather sad to see. A bottle of water was handed out 
and we finally made our way to the runway for our four hour journey to London Heathrow. So let's see what the flight has in store for us. And as we were taxiing to the runway right now, it's perhaps a great opportunity to subscribe to my Patreon to unlock some extra perks such as access to my WhatsApp group, early access to my videos, a Cahill keyring or monthly Zoom sessions. Check out the link in the description box below and become part of the Cahill army, helping me improve flying for all of us. and here we are 15 minutes into the flight um, experience so far very contrary to my flight last year crew is the polar opposite very unfriendly none of them said hi or shalom <laughs> during boarding so isn't the, the most friendliest bunch um, however seat black room blanket very lovely yeah, onboard service should start in uh, a couple of minutes as well. Uh, so let's see what the dining experience is like in the back of the Dreamliner of El Al. It was then time for breakfast and in all those years flying, I was never served such a dry and disgusting omelette. I could have eaten the onboard magazine instead and it would have been a more delicious snack. Once again, during service the crew gave out such an unwelcoming vibe that I really started to wonder whether they are okay. However, the entire breakfast was super poor and for whatever reason, no coffee or tea service was conducted. Perhaps it's not the thing on an owl, or the crew was simply too lazy to do so. It's something that I don't have an answer for, since it really seemed odd to me. Remember how I mentioned earlier that El Al did their research online and found out that I was flying with them? And that's because your personal data is being sold online every day by so-called data brokers, which is resulting in you getting endless spam emails, annoying phone calls of people trying to sell you stuff. However, today's sponsor, Incogni, helped me to solve this issue and will liberate you from endless spams as well as phone calls. I opened an account and they found my personal information was with 278 data brokers selling my email, phone number and other valuable data. It's a big money business, but luckily you have the right to request that those data brokers delete the information they have about you. Unfortunately, it would take you years to do it manually. That's why I love Incogni, because they do the work for you. They contact the data broker on your behalf and request for your data to be removed from their list. So you don't need to do anything other than opening an account, grant them the right to work for you and just sit back and relax while Incogni takes care of it. So the good news is the first 100 people to use my code Josh Cahill with the link in the description box below will get 60% off. So say goodbye to unwanted spam emails and annoying phone calls. Now let's get back to the review. So, and here we are inside the loo. Breakfast is awful. Um, there was no tea or coffee service either, which made no sense at all. And uh, uh, there were, there's no headphones. And when I asked for headphones, she responded with no. <laughs> so yeah. Um, 
weird, weird flight. Very, very different to my uh, first LL flight uh, last year, where I do think they knew that I was coming last time. So they put on a bit of a show, but this time I think I played it pretty well. And I'm unannounced. Well, I, am, I was unannounced anyways, the, the previous one, but uh, uh, this time they just didn't know Oh, they didn't do their homework right <laughs> whatever because I do heard they do a lot of research on their passengers for safety and security reasons um, but I think this time um, I am a normal passenger so I can give you the normal experience and it's underwhelming to be honest uh, rather disappointing I was expecting a lot more I was actually really excited for this flight but yeah uh, I would give it a 3 out of 10 um, yeah we uh, have 90 more minutes to go we fly into terminal 4 and then i actually continue to frankfurt on british airways but uh i'm not going to film this because nobody wants to see a euro business class trip um yeah all right anyway so i give you a full summary once we are on the ground in the united kingdom <laughs> the rest of the flight was rather eventless and at one point we started our descent into london heathrow what do i make of this flight it's hard to say since I had rather high expectations of LL after my first flight. I think the hard product is great and very competitive for an economy class cabin. However, the food was horrific and highly disappointing. Something I wasn't expecting at all. Also the crew was shocking. Something I'd least expect since I was showered with love and hospitality on my flight last year. But somehow I'm glad that I got to experience the real and unfiltered product of LL. I feel like I should try their premium economy class soon to get an even better idea, since every airline can have a bad day. But today was quite of a letdown and I wouldn't really recommend flying LL at this point. After arriving in London, I made my way to Frankfurt, Germany, where I was embarking on a 9-hour flight on Mongolia Airways Boeing 767-300 an airline I wanted to try for the longest time. It was quite an adventure and definitely a video you shouldn't miss out on. So please consider hitting that subscribe button right now to join me on a trip to the least populated country on earth, Mongolia. <laughs> 